This mod is for all of you who want to get a little extra power out of your turbocharged engine. You all know that colder air equals more power and a larger intercooler would also equal more power. So what would be the logical solution? Make your standard or even large intercooler be more efficient. That can be realized by spraying water on it. Well, yes, there might be some ways with using a garden sprayer from the interior, that's not really practical. But there's something that you can do that almost any stock car actually already has uh, to utilize and build a sprayer yourself. In this case, we are using a Audi A3 1AT, which is basically my second car which I ever got. So this is kind of building on a video I did a long time ago in German, but the results I explained in this video and the process I did in this video still applies. And I just wanna show you what difference this can make for about a dollar. In many cars, mostly hatchbacks, coupes, etc., you have a washer fluid reservoir that has actually two outputs or a pump with two outputs sometimes even two pumps depending on how the setup is so one for the front washers and one for the rear washer this means that you can use the rear washer for example because uh, let's just be honest you don't really use that that much uh, that often and you could just go and clean your rear window anyway. And a lot of people actually use a rear wiper delete, so that's kind of useless anyway. So you can repurpose this output to a intercooler sprayer. Just connect a vacuum hose from the output of that pump to a like garden fog sprayer or fogger. That's like a small nozzle that uh, is dispersing the water and put that in front of your intercooler. You can tape that or you can zip tie that in, into your bumper so that it points onto your intercooler and actually sprays water mist onto your intercooler. Obviously, when you are driving quickly, this isn't going to be a mist anymore or rather it is quickly finding its way onto your intercooler and through the air that is passing through the intercooler and hitting that water that is on the intercooler will actually make it a lot more efficient. I demonstrated this by um, testing the car I had in two different poles. So I had the system already installed. So if I push the button for the rear water sprayer, it would activate that water sprayer for the intercooler. When doing a pull from 100 to 200 kilometers per hour, in the first pull I did, which was actually cooler because it was the first pull, the other pulls I did right after that, so the air was already heated up. On the first pull, we achieved 52.5 degrees Celsius of intake air temperature. That is measured in the intake manifold on the 180. So it is not as precise as it could be. The actual intake air temperature might be a little bit lower even because the aluminum of the intake manifold will heat up the sensor slightly. But we achieved 52.5 degrees and the stock ECU pulled some timing because we were using a kind of stage one tune with 100 octane fuel. Then we did try another pull from 100 to 200, which didn't go so well. So we aborted that run and did another one from 100 to 200 uh, right after that. So it was actually the third pull. So that was kind of a worst case scenario uh, where the system actually already was heated up and we started to spray slightly before the pull and then did the run. And after that run was completed, the intake air temperature was only 42 degrees Celsius. So a drop of about 10 degrees. That's actually pretty impressive. And that is only at a boost pressure of 0.8 bar or 12 PSI. If you were, for example, running higher air intake temperatures or more boost pressure, or for example, the ambient air was much warmer than the 20 degrees we were testing at, then the system would be even more efficient and provide a even better result. You might say, well, what is the actual benefit of this? 
the reason why colder air actually makes more power is because cold air is denser than hotter air. In this case, for example, we have a density improvement of about 3% and that is only with that 10 degrees of difference. If you, for example, had a difference of 20 degrees, that difference obviously or that benefit would obviously be much larger and 20 degrees isn't even that difficult to actually achieve because in our scenario we had a very suboptimal setup where the um, sprayer wasn't really pointed to into the intercooler that well and it was also not a front mount intercooler there wasn't a lot of uh, surface area since it was a side mount so you can improve that setup by quite a bit and get I'd say 15 to 20 degrees Celsius improvements is realistic, which would net you a air density improvement of 5%. So you would in turn get a 5% higher oxygen content. And therefore you could in theory say you would be able to achieve about 5% of a power difference. That obviously is not 100% the truth. Uh, it might vary from car to car. It might be better on one and worse on the other because some engines actually might be pulling less ignition timing. Um, if you know stock ECUs on modern cars, they are run on an ignition table that is actually overly advanced and the ECU actually pulls timing because the engine is slightly knocking and the engine basically is always running kind of retarded from the actual ignition map it is supposed to be at. In our case, as I said, we were about pulling 1.5 or 0.7 degrees on the first run. If we, for example, would have done the third run with no water spray and the intake temps were even higher, then might have pulled even more timing. But on the third run with the spray, we actually pulled no, no timing at all. So that's actually something even more positive to think about. On a car that pulls even more ignition timing before, then you will have a greater benefit after that because a lower intake air temperature will actually result in a lower likelihood of knock. So you will also have more power because of that. That's it from me for this topic. Let me know in the comments below if you have tried something like this. I will probably in the future also show something like this implemented in a standalone ECU so that you don't have to press a button to use it and it will be activated automatically with a pressure, pressure switch or at a certain boost pressure for example, which can be quite handy because that's basically a almost zero budget a water injection or water sprayer that works automatically like in some performance cars is implemented such as some Subarus and BMWs. And as always, have a nice day and goodbye.